Yo, what up guys? We're here back at it again with another one. Project Looking Glass, a glimpse into the future. Honestly, I don't know what this is. Let's go. You know me because of a story I broke last March concerning something called the Guardians of the Looking Glass. Basically, Bruh. what we had here is a technology that was built which would give those people who operated that technology, of course, a huge advantage because they could see and view timelines within a stream, within a field. You know, the awareness of this technology came to us through a certain whistleblower. Nah. And one of them was a guy by the name of Dan Bush who went into... Hold up. You mean like, what would that even look like? Some detail about how that technology was acquired. It starts at the end of the Second World War. It was the first time that the United States ever came into contact with certain ETs, you could say, who began appearing over the skies of the United States. And their appearance, again, was accompanied by crashes and captures of both the craft and the pilots piloting that craft. Okay. And it leads directly to the formation of the breakaway civilization, that which was created by one ultra, ultra secret society that was called Majestic 12. They who have ultimately come into possession of the looking glass material and time travel and other technologies ever since. So between 1947 and the early 50s, there were a series of crashes that took place, not just one, um, and they started the whole back engineering process. Um, and they also had captured extraterrestrial beings. And the looking glass has ended up area in S4 area 51. No way. The program out at area S4 consisted of three projects. Project Galileo, Project Sidekick, and Project Looking Glass. Project Galileo dealt with gravity propulsion. Project Sidekick dealt with a beam weapon that had a neutron source and was focused by a gravity lens. Project Looking Glass dealt with the physics of seeing back in time. What they really discovered in principle is that the ETs are not really truly ETs. They are us. What? Nah. The future. They That's call them J-Rods. A long period of introduction. That's crazy. That's crazy. You know, say uh, an ABE, an alien. I, I call them J Rod, of course that's what they call them, but that wasn't his you know, I don't know if that was his real name or not. That's the name that the the, the linguist gave him. So he knew J Rod. <laughs> from Zeta Reticuli, which is what we are gonna colonize in the future. And they traveled back fifty two thousand and forty five thousand years respectively. To exactly before this time, the you're gonna tell me them green little things are are evolutionary descendants of humans? That's that's nutty, bro. And they're from Zeta Reticuli. That means, okay, so time travel exists at the speed of light coming from Zeta Reticuli, which is probably a couple of light years away to here. Would be the like the distance like that. So it'd probably be like a thousand years to get here. And then us humans evolve into that. Yo, what did humans look like a thousand years ago? I'm pretty sure they didn't look any different than what we look like right now, right? And before this event takes place, for different reasons. What they found was that there are three types of beings. There's two J-Rods, which were called P-52s. The P-52s were for 52,000 years in the future, and the P-45s were from 45,000 years in the future. And the so there's different were ranks. Interested in helping us, they were just here to harvest genetic materials which they had lost over the course of tens of thousands of years of exposure. The P-52s also returned because they came back and they were trying to tell us our, our consciousness can affect our timeline. Not just the timeline, but also cosmic events. They were trying to tell us that the cosmic event, which is about to happen, can be affected by our collective consciousness. It's going to play out in two ways. It could end up with a timeline that prevails that's an organic timeline where mankind will begin to wake up and en masse um, and that we will change the trajectory of that course by raising our consciousness 
and then there's going to be some event and our change in consciousness will actually set in motion a positive version of how that event affects us. We've also heard, we've heard about ancient civilizations. That was Atlantis. crazy. Wait, 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 wait. They got, they got like 45,000 year old version, you know, in the future version coming back to visit. And then they got the 50,000 year version coming back to visit. It's like, yeah, 45, what, 40,000 year version did didn't really work out so we're here back at the same time because this version of da na na what if what if all ets are just like us from the future <laughs> Muria or mu That's and you know they come and go crazy, they seem to man. end in some huge cataclysm or some destruction some destructive event happens society blows up it's like a loop eventually you would have to crack that loop so maybe here is the chance to actually break that loop and the other timeline they were talking about that may prevail is this transhumanist timeline. Along comes 2022, and it's been like 10 years since the last looking glass uh, whistleblowers had been out there talking about it, Dan Bursch and a few others. Uh, um, but this suddenly appeared, this group calling themselves the guardians of the looking glass. Oh. We are the guardians of the looking glass. We're a group of former intelligence officers and military officials who have come together to release classified information about future events to come. Our knowledge comes from our work on the looking glass artifact, first discovered in Iraq. During this time, the artifact was activated by the US military and connected to computers. We were able to see dozens what? of future timelines and the convergent singularities that led to two possible outcomes by the year 2030. In one outcome, humanity awakens and the current order is dismantled and an event occurs. And instead of this, this uh, event being negative, it is a positive one. In the other outcome, the current structure remains in place. A nuclear war takes place along with many horrible events. Then the event occurs. Oh, brother. Instead of being a positive event, it's a negative one. I'm going to talk about what we can do about it. And that's got to do with the positive timeline. We have opportunity here. The J-Rods, you know, they told us. All right, all right. You got to, we got to stick to that positive timeline because uh, things are looking pretty crazy you right now you know you know uh -huh. all right let's go let's go let's finish this let's finish this us that basically they were talking about these two primary timelines that there is a future where a possibly pole shift related environmental catastrophe is averted and does not happen and relative to this different timeline the future that generated the j-rods as we know them will never evolve from our own and we have taken a new path so in this timeline, which also the Guardians saw, there is a probability of that, that happening. And so they talk about that as well. If the post-global pole shift environmental catastrophe does not occur, the benefits could be to alternatively produce a human consciousness, liberating evolutionary leapfrog, and a level of enlightenment among the masses that will produce a new set of future timeline trajectories that will compassionately steer the course of humanity into a virgin future of untold beneficial futures and heights and in fact fulfill the original evolutionary directive to evolve consciousness of humanity to its optimum potential let's go future creative agencies in the universe these let's messages go. that we got from these j-rods decades ago are trying to reinforce that idea and now we're starting to maybe the reason this how funny would it be if the looking glass uh device was just like <laughs> the the j rods aliens uh ipad and then that's just like an animated wallpaper that he, that they're looking at and they're like oh shit the future of humanity <laughs> came up now is because we're kind of at that last moment where it's we just having it with like the no wallpaper yeah hopefully we don't do any nuclear stuff to each other and we all chill out and we all you know everything bob lazar said in 1989 has been validated they're demons not aliens go read the book of enoch and you will see this is true i think our mandela effects are timeline changes from the tra from time travelers yes for sure for sure some of us can do what project looking glass claims to do <laughs> can we have bernstein bear back all right, all right, all right. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and drop some roses in the chat. Say goodnight. Peace.